Welcome back everyone. Now that we have explored some descriptive analysis with our nominal level and our interval ratio level data, and you created some ordinal level data, if you were able to break down your work-life balance scale on homework number two and get your range of scores, but we'll delve into a little bit more about ordinal level data as we move forward. You handle ordinal level data, which is what we call Likert scales, strongly disagree to strongly agree, typically like you handle nominal level data when you're doing an analysis. Ordinal level data is the one data that can kind of go either way with, and you can handle it like interval ratio or you can handle it like nominal. So ordinal level data tends to be a little bit unique. Most of what we do in social work, we're going to handle it the same as we handle nominal level data, okay? But now we're going to take a step forward in the direction of looking at correlations. Correlations is kind of the bridge between descriptive statistic analysis and inferential analysis. Because when we get to correlation, we'll actually be able to begin looking at significance in that correlation and then that moves us into inference. But for this week, we're simply going to learn how to look at correlation between two variables, how to compute it in Excel, how to interpret our findings, and how to write our findings. Very simple, very straightforward. We're not looking at significance at this point. We'll learn that down the road. So correlation, <coughs> often known as product moment correlation or Pearson's correlation coefficient. You may have heard that term. Um, the correlation coefficient is a number between negative one and positive one. So when you calculate the, cor the correlation between two interval ratio level variables, it's going to return a number to you. It'll either be a negative or a positive, but it'll always between, be between negative one and positive one. In this particular case, when you're interpreting that, the number, the negative and positive tells you one thing and the number tells you one thing. So don't get confused with using the negative or the positive like we do if we're using math and subtracting and adding. But in this case, the negative and the positive tells you if it's a negative relationship or an inverse relationship or a positive relationship, okay? So the negative gives you that indication, and then the number between one and one, negative one and positive one, gives you the strength of the relationship, okay? So today in our example, what I have here is I have clients and I have their self-concept and their depression, and I'm going to just copy this and move this down to my bottom of my spreadsheet so I can walk you through it and how to calculate it. Um, and then we'll still have all my original output here, okay? So down here we have client, we have Sally, Jose, Sarah, Dick, Matt, and Joan. We have their self-concept scores and we have their depression scores. And remember when we're using a standardized instrument, we always have to look at how the author says to score that, okay? So in the, on this particular depression level, it's measured on a scale of 20 to 80 with lower scores indicating lower levels of depression higher scores indicating higher levels of depression, okay? Self-concept is measured on a scale from 1 to 12 with higher numbers indicating higher levels of self-concept. Now we could actually have a hypothesis here based on what we know about self-concept and depression and it could be that um, those with higher levels of self-concept will have lower levels of depression. That's a hypothesis. We make that statement based on research that we know that individuals who have high levels of self-concept will have low levels of depression. So that's the, that's the hypothesis we can investigate with our correlation right here, okay? So I'm gonna come over here <coughs> and then I'm just going to go to my data. Remember at the top, my your data menu and when you click on it you're going to have your data analysis which is that tool pack that you put in there if it's not there you just have to put it back in like I said sometime Excel kicks it out for some reason so I have my data analysis okay 
when I click on that window and it comes up, look at there, I have a correlation option. So I can calculate correlation. Then I'm gonna hit OK. And then when I hit OK, then this window comes up. I have an input range. Remember our input range? This is where you drag down the columns, tell Excel what columns you want to analyze. Now, what's unique about correlation is the columns have to be side by side, okay, that you want analyzed. So my input range is going to include my self-concept and my depression, and I'm going to include them all together, not one at a time, I've included them all together. So when this opens up, I can see that I'm going from B48 to C54. So I'm including all of those columns. I included my labels that were in the first row, and it's by columns, not by rows. This is the default, so you wanna leave it by columns because you're capturing it by columns there. Now I'm going to tell where to put it. And I'm just gonna come up here in my output range, and I'm gonna say, just put it right there. You can just do a couple of the, the cells right there. So I have my input range, which is both of my columns. I included my labels. I've got my output range and I'm gonna put it right there and I'm gonna hit okay. So this is what comes up, this particular box. You've got self-concept and self-concept is a perfect one. That should be a perfect one because it's, it's the same measure. So it should correlate exactly you have depression right here and depression. It's a perfect one. It correlates exactly. But what you're interested in is this one right here, which correlates your self-concept with your depression. And what do you have? You have a negative 0 0.95. So you have negative 0 0.95 for your product correlation coefficient. What that tells us is we have an inverse relationship. Negative means inverse, okay? And it means that when self-concept goes up, depression goes down. When depression goes up, self-concept goes down. It tells us how these two variables work together. So it's negative. When one goes up, the other goes down. And it's a 0.95. That's very close to a one, correct? So that's a very strong relationship. So in our self-concept and depression scores of these particular clients, we have a very strong inverse relationship between self-concept and depression. So what it tells us is that if we can work to get our clients' self-concept scores moved up, their depression scores are automatically going to go down. Simple, straightforward, that's what it tells us. Honestly, that's what it is. Now what you want to do, because you need to be able to explain things about your sample population, remember, you're still gonna to wanna to run your descriptives on each of the individual tests because you need that information to describe your results. So let's go back to our data. Let's go to our data analysis. I'm gonna go back to my descriptives like we did before with our interval ratio level. My input range is going to be my self-concept only. I'm just interested in the descriptives about the self-concept test for these um, clients. I included my labels. My output range, I'm gonna put my output range just right there, just right below my correlation coefficient. I want my summary statistics. I'm gonna hit okay. So there's my self-concept scores that I have. Let's go ahead and get these down to, uh, I'm actually gonna get rid of all decimals right there. Okay, now I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna do the same thing for my depression scores. I've got my descriptive statistics. I just need to change my input and I just need to change my output where I want it to be. Hit okay. And then I've got my depression scores. Let's go down and just for fun, I'm gonna make this with no decimals. Okay, what I know is my self-concept and my mean is nine. My mean on my depression is 46. There's my standard deviation is three. Standard deviation is 18. Okay, I've got a minimum maximum range right there. Minimum maximum range, 25 to 72. I have a total of six, so I know I've captured everybody because I have six in there. 
okay? So this gives me the descriptive information about my sample population related to their self-concept and their, their depression. I now have all the information I need to describe the results for the correlation between self-concept and depression. So I'm gonna come right back up here and I'm providing you with an example of how to write your results. And basically, I have a total of six clients. For some reason, I've got seven in there. I have a total of six clients who participated in a support group for managing depression. Pre-test scores indicate that the client group mean had a self-concept set of 8.83 or 3.13. I actually switched that over and didn't um, and got rid of the the decimals so I could change this and say it actually had a score of nine with a standard deviation of just three okay on a scale from 1 to 12 there's my scale 1 to 12 with a range from 4 to 12 so when I stood I've got a range from 4 to 12 okay it is also noted that the median for the group is 9, indicating 50% of those participating had a relatively high self-esteem score. On a depression scale from 20 to 80, the group demonstrated a moderate level of depression with a mean of 45.83, or actually could be 46 in whole numbers, okay, a standard deviation of 18, with a <coughs> range from 25 to 72. A strong negative correlation, in parentheses, negative 0 0.95, was identified between self-concept and depression. Therefore, I could continue saying this, therefore, an intervention to increase individual self-concept will result in decreased levels of depression. Bam, that's it. That's your correlation. That's as simple as it gets right there, okay? So that's how you compute it in Excel. Let me just put this right back up there where it was. So you'll have everything you need. All right. So there you go, computing correlation in Excel. That's the assignment for week, this week. That's the homework assignment.